Okay, so this section is all about um, energy homeostasis and eating. Um, and so a question I uh, pose to you is what dictates your eating habits? Is it psychological? Is it biological? Is it social, cultural, um, or evolutionary? Um, we all have some kind of role in there. I want you to think about a time when, or just a typical stereotypical movie that you see um, where um, a woman, her boyfriend broke up with her and now she's eating a tub of ice cream. That would be more psychological. Biological is what we do every day when we get hungry. Um, social, you've been in a situation where you're not really hungry, but everybody's eating pizza or they're having a coffee or whatever it is, and you go and you have, um, you know, social eating. Um, cultural, everything's really um, guided by that. Some of us eat um, things that are motivated to eat things because culturally we're um, taught to eat those things. Um, one of the videos I have in this section is just a quick, you can look at a couple of countries, shows you school lunches around the world, um, and ours are so bad compared to everybody else's, um, but how different it is just um, culture-wise and, and how they function under lunch. Um, evolutionary is really interesting. One thing you need to know about your body that makes this a lot of sense when we talk about all these um, hormones and um, body fluids and things that are, are involved with eating is that your body naturally stores fat. Evolutionary-wise, it does. And why is that? Well, we still have what's been passed along from our ancestors. Um, and the fat that is stored in our body naturally, some, we have to have some, um, is because ancestral-wise, we were hunters and gatherers a long time ago. And we still have those genes that have been passed along to us. And in the summertime, we'd have an abundance of food. But in the wintertime, we wouldn't. So they, our bodies generally would store a lot of fat. So in the winter months when we were starving, um, or our ancestors were starving, we would still have fat reserves in order to have energy and be able to um, run our organs, especially. Okay, So we typically have that. And, and because our body continues to want to store fat, that's what sort of fluctuates and um, has some trouble when we're, we're trying to be at a certain body weight that we want to be at. Um, when we talk about this section of body weight uh, and so forth, again, we are only talking about eating because so we know about the function of eating. And uh, when we talk about eating, we want to talk about eating healthy and also having a good relationship with food. Um, and that body, uh, um, weight and looks and all that stuff is all irrelevant is how healthy and how good you feel in your own skin um, and so forth. There's some things that are related to us that are more health related, of course, and we can find some things out about BMI um, that we uh, might want to, you know, find out and say, okay, well, if I have a high BMI, what does that mean for me? Um, but it's certainly not anything um, anybody is going to ever have to um, share with me or anybody else in the class. Um, and so uh, it, as much as this uh, this particular chapter can trigger some things, I do have some kids that have had um, eating disorders and may, some of you that might be the case. And so um, just be aware that some of that stuff might be triggered and that's completely normal and um, very uh, you know well received by me uh, that if you need to talk about it. Um, and so forth, and, and know that that's a natural thing that this, uh, these conversations might trigger some things for you. Step back and try to think about the biological reasons of eating, and then when people have food issues and have eating issues, then we know what the body is normally supposed to do, and then what are the things that um, we'll talk about, some of the things that can happen um, due to that, um, due to having issues. Okay, so let's start talking about the role of energy homeostasis. Your body is trying to maintain a certain weight that's healthy and also energy. You have to have energy to run your body and your organs and so forth. That's what happens when a lot of people have eating disorders. Um, their bodies start to shut down because they don't have enough food and they start um, you know, eating up their adipose tissue and their fat and then there's nothing left. And, and that's why they have low energy and then we start um, having um, organ breakdown. Um, your food is broken down by enzymes that are absorbed in your intestines. And a lot of you took bio and, and, and anatomy. These things are going to be sort of um, review for you, which is great. Um, and those are converted into fatty acids, amino acids, and simple sugars. Now, two things that have a great role in, your, in food and how we feel uh, is your glucose and your insulin. Your glucose is simple sugar, and that's where you're going to get your energy, and your uh, pancreas is going to secrete your insulin, which is going to help that glucose and promote all the energy going to this, the tissue and muscles that you need in order to uh, function. Now, uh, when we function, a third of our body is really our physical activity. Most of our energy is going towards our basal metabolic rate, which is 
uh, our resting heart rate, and all of our vital functions. So you can see when you don't eat, um, that is where we see some issues uh, with our bodily functions. Now, when you don't use all that energy, then it's going to be stored as fat, and it's going to be that anaposed tissue, and it's there for a reserve. And again, your body does this because it's an evolutionary thing um, that it's maintaining that, and in case you need it, it's there for your body to protect you from having any damage and not having bodily functions. Um, your liver is going to monitor your glucose level and utilize that stored energy when it is needed. Okay, so your baseline body, uh, body weight, okay, and, and in the next uh, segment, you're going to be, um, if you want to, you can um, calculate your BMI. It's not required, but if you kind of want to know and you don't know where you're at, you're going to be um, able to do that in the comfort of your own home um, and without, with yourself. Um, and so one of the things that we, it's kind of obvious is when your body is trying to maintain a certain weight. If you get um, too heavy, then it will... Um, do certain things when you get too low in weight it will do certain things as well and just the general idea is if you expel more energy than you're taking in then the weight's going to drop a little bit and the number of calories we eat kind of matches sort of the expended energy that we give then we sort of maintain that weight counting calories though it, honestly when you are looking at weight loss is not really all of it and and you know not eating a lot of calories and um, and not eating a lot of fat is not always the answer. Like your body needs fat, it needs good food in it. Um, and just having a balanced diet um, and, and eating healthy foods is good too. Um, but you know, as, as much as I am a health uh, guru in that sense, and we eat a lot of organics and non-processed food, um, we go out and have pizza. I mean, you're, you have cake and eat those kinds of yummy things and, and have those as treats um, and so forth. So. Um, having a good uh, idea of the fact that, you know, calories and energy, it kind of makes sense uh, and so forth. The fewer calories you have, the, the, the fat store is going to shrink and, and that reserve is going to uh, shrink. Now, if it shrinks too much, then your body is going to work to try to get you um, to bring it back up. Okay, so these are really important. You need to know insulin, glucose, ghrelin, all those kinds of things. You need to know all these, and we're going to do... A, one of your assignments today is you're going to be doing a, a review of these, so um, this will be good for you to um, to uh, review and then try to do it on your own. So the role of insulin and glucose are really important. They do stimulate eating. Insulin also reduces eating as well, but if we're talking about just stimulating, these are all short-term signals that regulate e eating, okay? So immediately when you're sort of in that realm of eating and so forth, what do these look like? So 30 minutes before you eat, there's an increase in your insulin that's going to stimulate eating, and then there's a decrease in your glucose. And one thing is like your glucose, like your, your sugar is dropping. It really doesn't drop in a normal range. Um, it stops. It's very slight. Unless you have or hypoglycemic where you're um, low blood or sugar, which you can see in the diagram is a lot of those blue is not a lot, and, or, hypo, or hyperglycemic where you have high blood sugar. If you're in those realms, then yes, your, your glucose is off. But in the normal range for most of us, it's going to be very slight, okay? It gives you that desire to eat, and then when you eat, it's going to return those levels to normal and so forth, okay? Almost immediately, you kind of feel better if you feel really hungry and you feel like your energy is kind of down, you start to feel better almost immediately. Um, ghrelin is how you pronounce this one. Ghrelin is a hormone called the hunger hormone, which also is going to help to stimulate eating. Um, and it's a hormone that's in the stomach, the lining of the stomach, and this is going to uh, stimulate appetite as it rises. And uh, when we diet, that's why, and we eat less, and we're, we're seeing that, right? We've been eating over break and having great Christmas food and, and Hanukkah food and whatever we're having, and uh, we are feeling like we need to eat less. So now that we're eating less, we start to get hungry, and that's what ghrelin is doing. It's making our increase. Other things that stimulate or that are not biological in manner, um, it could be uh, classical conditioning. A lot of us, um, because, uh, and you guys are not experiencing now because uh, of, of being at home, but when you're at school and you start eating a lunch, you know, on a weekend, you're also going to start feeling hungry around that time as well. Um, so uh, as we kind of get on certain time schedules, uh, we can do that. Um, a, a bell can do that. Uh, the setting, you know, sort of that you're at the cafeteria. If you've ever noticed, um, 
you're not hungry when you're in a classroom and then all of a sudden you get to the cafeteria and you're starving, you know, so that can stimulate eating. And then also operant conditioning, we get a reward from eating and that reward is food tastes great. It's a, a pleasurable thing to eat, okay? You think about thing that something that you don't really like to eat and you're like, eh, I don't really want to eat it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat it. It's not going to stimulate my eating because I'm not loving it. And then you're like, oh, I can't, I'm so full, but I can't resist the dessert that I want um, because you know, it's going to taste good. Okay. Now, another thing that's going to regulate eating in the short term is when we reduce that eating. Okay. So immediately satiation, uh, the, the word in green, satiation is that feeling of fullness. So when we stop eating, so immediately we've got the stimulation of eating, we eat, and then this is the other side of it. And that's when we feel full, we, do, we have a reduced uh, desire to eat. Um, there are stretch receptors, thank goodness, in our stomach um, that tell us that we are and, and signal to the brainstem that it's time to stop eating. And that sensitivity is from pleocystokinine, which is a hormone in your small intestine, excuse me, that makes um, and acts as a, a neurotransmitter and will get those uh, stretch receptors to be uh, sensitive, okay? Now, it's good that we have them. I know um, not all animal, animals have stretch receptors. In fact, um, there's a story, my dad's a lawyer and he uh, had a case where Purdue was suing a company, the feed company, uh, for uh, their chickens dying. Um, and basically what happened is uh, chickens will just continue to eat if you keep give them food, apparently. So the, over the weekend, the feed just kept giving them food. And when they came in on Monday morning, all the chickens had kind of blown up because they, they don't have stretch receptors, uh, apparently, in their stomachs and got all fat and um, died. And, and they're basically their stomachs exploded. Um, we don't have that. We feel full and we're ready to stop, okay? Um, the other thing that can get us to stop is when we're eating rich, rich foods, and that's what sensory-specific satiety is. Um, and satiety is when you're eating specifically a food. Okay, my my story is about the cheese, as you see on the on the top right-hand corner. Um, when I was little, I loved cheese, uh, and I wanted to have a snack, and I took a whole bar of cheese outside and I started eating it. And you can just imagine, you get about a quarter, a couple of bites in, and you're just like, oh, it's just too much. So certain foods like potato chips, I don't know what it is about potato chips, but you can eat those forever. But something like cheese or something really rich, there's just certain foods that just get us to like not eat that much of them, okay? Um, however, if you're eating that and you get full of that food and somebody gives you a chip or a dessert or something that's different from that food, you all of a sudden you can eat again. So um, it's not the fact of being hung of less hungry it's the fact that that food is, has, um, has sort of saturated. That's what that kind of uh, prefix is for, saturated your mouth and you don't want to eat it anymore, okay? So those things uh, reduce eating. Okay, um, long-term signals uh, that regulate weight are the following, leptin. Leptin is in your body and it is related to weight uh, loss and gain. And it's secreted by your fat or your adipose tissue. And the amount of fat that you have equates to the amount of leptin that you have. So the more fat that you have stored, the more leptin you have. And leptin increases in the brain, it's going to reduce your fats. And think about how evolutionary wise that makes sense. Because when we have enough fat storage, then we're gonna reduce our eating and leptin's going to be one of those things that's gonna trigger that. If your um, fat stores reduce, then leptin is going to decrease and it's gonna trigger eating, okay? So when leptin increases, you're gonna eat less because you need less fat, because it's the relationship of fat and leptin. And when you lose fat and your evolutionary biological thing is going on, it says, ooh, we need more fat, so we need to decrease leptin and get that desire to eat going up. They did an experiment with this with um, mice and they genetically mutated them to say, okay, what if they didn't have any leptin? Um, and these mice ate five times more and they had, their body was not great. So leptin's good for us. It, it actually decreased their immune system, low temperature and, and didn't have enough energy um, because they didn't have a lot of leptin, okay? Um, and that's kind of interesting because they were, um, you know, because they didn't have the signal in their brain, 
um, there was a lot of problems. Um, and so people were thinking like, would, would this help with weight? And so the issue with leptin though, is it's, if you get um, enough leptin, you can get it over, it's like, um, it's almost like taking a drug where you're, you know, after a while they're immune to the drug. And that's sort of that brain stops signaling, the hormone stops working for the brain to signal um, something. So what they found is that people that are more obese tend to have higher levels of leptin. And when you have higher levels, then it stops signaling the brain to do what it needs to do for weight loss and weight gain um, and weight loss especially. So um, leptin resistance signals to the brain that you need to save energy um, and so you don't lose calories because it's trying to save those that energy and calories. And so um, that's the, the take. It's, so it's not, it's really, leptin is kind of something that it found out is not really going to work with dieting. The other um, two um, that are also long-term are insulin. And insulin, um, as we talked about, is something that triggers eating, but it's not always that way. Okay, so uh, again, it's, it's based on the amount of fat you have in your body as well. Um, like leptin, and um, there are receptors in the same areas of the hypothalamus as leptin. Remember, the hypothalamus is your brain within a brain, and it controls all of these uh, different um, uh, hormones and um, bodily fluids to be secreted uh, when you are eating or not wanting to eat, okay? Um, so that's really important. So when we talk about it, um, the brain levels for insulin are also associated uh, with reduction in uh, eating and body weight. So the reason why that works is because um, when, because insulin in the brain reduces food intake, the food intake consequently increases body weight, okay? Um, and it's restored, like insulin and so forth is restored. Conversely, when a person gains too much weight, the insulin signal increases and reduces our food intake um, so that we can maintain that weight, okay? And that's what it does. It maintains our body weight. That's why it's a long-term signal, okay? Now, neuropeptide Y is a neurotransmitter also in the, in the hypothalamus, um, and that's going to trigger eating. So it's secreted by weight loss, um, and when we have secretion of insulin and leptin, I mean, it will trigger that, trigger that and really helps to maintain uh, your weight um, and so forth. Um, it decreases when we have weight gain. So again, when we're trying, our body is constantly trying to find this baseline to be in. Okay. Um, now, in your on your sheet that you filled out, you should have filled out short term and long term. You may have more short term or long term. That's fine. It's a graphic organizer for you to just. You can add more boxes if you want. Um, it's a graphic organizer for you to sort of keep um, those in line. But now we've gone over short and long, and you just kind of put those in. Um, now, if we're going to review, uh, remember these are these pages are 17 to 20. It's not very much, but it's a lot of information. We're going to talk about what stimulates eating. We talk about ghrelin, uh, neuropeptide wide, and glucose and insulin. If we talk about what suppresses, we talk about leptin, insulin, and uh, cholecystokinin. Okay. You can also put uh, insulin in there as well, but I've tried to keep it like three and three uh, for the most part. Um, or insulin's on there. What am I talking about? Um, so I wanted to keep it um, just with these hormones and body fluids. And of course, we have, you know, stimulating eating can also be not biological, but um, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. All right, that's it. Have a great day, everybody.